right, the time is 6 p.m. on April 19th, 2021. Ms. Garcia, could we have a roll call, please? Mayor Walter? Here. Vice Mayor Porter? Here. Councilmember Anderson? Here. Councilmember Rodriguez? Here. Councilmember Hughes is absent. Councilmember Neal? Here. And Councilmember Mendoza? Here. We have a quorum. All right, thank you so much. At this time, if we could stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, we'll go ahead with call to the public. Call to the public for public comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the town council. Council rules limit public comment to three minutes. Individual council members may respond to criticism made by those commenting, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that a matter be placed on a future agenda. However, members of the council shall not discuss or take legal action on any matter during an open call to the public unless those matters are properly noticed for discussion and legal action. Do we have anybody that would like to speak at this time? Uh, if there's anybody that would like to speak that's attached to the Zoom meeting, if you could please raise your hand now. Mayor, um, Courtney Ramirez did put in and she is there and would like to speak tonight. Excellent, thank you. Ms. Ramirez? Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. So I was wondering if there would be any way that the council could see about what needs to be done to, um, to change a building code with residential water meters and the irrigation meter to require home builders to automatically install the irrigation meter upon buildings so that the residents aren't charged for sewer fees when they use their outside water. Okay, did you have anything else? No. Okay. I wanted to say thank you because you sent an email um, over the weekend to all of council and I did forward that email back to Ms. Garcia and our town manager, Mr. Billingsley, as well as wanted to communicate it out here tonight that we've directed staff to take a look at that and then bring back um, the necessary steps moving forward after they find out the information that's needed. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. It's when people bring up, you know, things that we are able to take a look at them and always looking to improve any processes. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak at this time? I do not see anybody else raising their hand at this time. All right, thank you so very much. At this time we have item 6A, which is presentations. Our presentation this evening is on Pinal County March Madness. Ms. Garcia, would you go ahead and put up that bracket if you don't mind? All right, can everybody hear me? All right, so in a moment, I'm going to call forward Mr. Ty Schnaufernagel. Ty, come on up. 
Ty is a small business owner with American Family Insurance. Recently, he was named the Agency Owner of the Month Honors for March 2021. He serves on our Florence IDA Commission. And this commission promotes and encourages economic growth and job creation by making low interest loans available to qualified projects through the issuance of tax exempt bonds. Tom is also, Tom, gosh, Ty is also the board president for a local 501c3 nonprofit, Paladin, and he serves as their board president. Last year, when COVID hit throughout our communities, he really found some creative, amazing opportunities to bring our community together. He works really hard to bring businesses support that they need. Him and his team created Pinal County March Madness in 2020. They took some feedback that was received and they brought that forward again this year. I'm going to let him talk a little bit about that this evening, but I just, I wanted to bring him up here, give some background to who he is, and then we're also going to be acknowledging the winner. Perfect. Well, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Town Council, for letting me uh, have an opportunity just to share what we've been doing. This has been a really exciting project. I'm a big basketball fan, and last year when it was canceled and everything was happening with COVID, we just didn't know what what it looked like and where where things were were headed. And so the thought was, hey, let's let's how can we support the local businesses? And, and the original nominations was when you bring people into town or you have out of town visitors or family, where are the places you want to take them inside Pinal County? So uh, we, we grabbed nominations. People voted all over the place with who they wanted to see. And then based on Yelp reviews and Google reviews and number of nominations, we seated them in a one through 16 uh, of a total 64 total uh, uh, locations. And so it could be parks, it could be uh, you know state parks, it could be restaurants, it could be uh, landmarks, different places within Pinal County. So we've had a ton of fun doing it. It's been really exciting watching other uh, people tell us the places they visited. A lot of people said, I had no idea that this was in our county. Um, and we're just trying to trying to promote and trying to get back and let uh, and let these businesses and restaurants be recognized for going through a, just a crazy hard time. It, it's been it's been a super challenging 12 plus months. And this was a way that we uh, wanted to get creative to recognize them and get some positive traction. So this year, uh, once again, Florence had an incredible showing uh, inside the bracket. So people voted and and uh, with each round, there was some there's some really good matchups. And it was it was super fun to see it all unfold, but uh, there's gotta be a winner. And, and we had that winner and uh, he's here tonight. Peter from Mount Athos, if you wanna come up. Um, we are super excited that, uh, that, you, that you won. Mount Athos restaurant uh, right here in town was, was the winner. Um, so I have, I have two jobs. It's, well, first of all, excellent work. Um, two, two things I need to do. I'm, we're, I'm gonna follow you back to the restaurant. I'm gonna purchase $500 in gift cards uh, to give out to the local community as being the winner of our uh, Pinal County March Madness. So congrats from that. And while I'm there, I've been on strict orders to pick up dinner to take home for my family <laughs> tonight. So I will take care of that as well. Um, but uh, hey, really good job. You did a great job sharing it. Really cool to see the engagement in the town. Um, I'm excited to see this continue to grow. We had a lot of fun so and great appreciate the support. So you did, a, you did a good job, man. So you, you made it happen. And we're just grateful that uh, we we're able to showcase and that Florence showed up and it was Florence strong. It was uh, Florence did really well all the way through it. The final matchup was windmill winery versus, uh, versus Mount Athos. So that's, that's a pretty good matchup. So, yep. Thank you guys. Really appreciate it. All right, so I don't want them to go yet because I wanted to express my appreciation and gratitude for everything that you gentlemen do. So I have, we're gonna take a little picture. This is a certificate of appreciation to Ty And I gave you two, one for you, for your home office, and I gave you one for your, you know, because I know that, you know, you have a lot to do with me. Yeah. 
Thank you so much. And then it's been too long since we've given out certificates in person. Yes, yes, please. This certificate is from Mount Athos, Pinal County March Madness 2021 Business of the Year winner. Mount Athos specializes in Greek, American, and Italian fine cuisine, offering an assortment of dishes. They have a wonderful atmosphere, friendly service, and great food. Congratulations on being named the 2021 Pinal County March Madness Winner of the Year. I like these microphones better. Thinks I'm joking. So much easier to talk into those. All right, so item number seven is our consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda will be handled by a single vote as part of the consent agenda, unless a council member or member of the public objects at the time the agenda item is called. Item A is proclamation declaring April 30th, 2021 as Arbor Day. Item C is approval of seven phase two returning stronger grant applications received in the amount of $47,597.64. Item D, approval of the February 16th, February 22nd, March 1st, March 8th, March 15th, March 22nd, March 25th, March 29th, and March 31st, 2021 Town Council meeting minutes. And item E is to receive and file the following boards and commission minutes, March 4th, 2021, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting minutes. Is Madam there... Mayor, you missed item B. Actually, it's not on here. Item B. Item B. Okay, the one online, I apologize. I was reading from it, did not have a B. Got it, thank you. Item B is resolution number 1773-21, which is adoption of a resolution of the town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, authorizing the town to enter into a grant agreement with the city of Tucson Police Department regarding the Arizona high intensity drug trafficking area. All right, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our consent agenda for this evening. Seeing no such movement, I need a motion. I make a motion we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item eight is unfinished business. This is ordinance number 702-21. This is the second reading and the discussion approval disapproval of an ordinance of the town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, amending title 11 of the town code entitled business regulations by replacing the business license fee schedule in section 110-38, effective July 1st, 2021. Ms. Lisa Garcia. Mayor and members of council, just a reminder, we've presented on this at the last meeting, and this is basically a housekeeping item to make sure that we are providing consistency to our business in an easy and friendly manner. If you have any questions, I'm happy to address them. Council member Rodriguez? No? Okay. With that, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve ordinance number 702-21 as read. A second. 
We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same side. And that motion carries. Item nine, new business. 9A is discussion, approval, disapproval of necessary operating transfers to the general fund CIP in an amount not to exceed $26,700 to the highway user fund in an amount not to exceed $1,021,738 out of the general fund in an amount not to exceed $82,508 and out of the general fund in an amount not to exceed $965,930. Ms. Becky Jimenez. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor and Town Council. Uh, I told you last uh, meeting I'd be before you again with these inner fund transfers. And I do want to make a clarification. Some uh, a good portion of this money is not coming out of the general fund. It's coming out of the general government CIP fund. The general government CIP fund is made up of um, residential construction tax and transfers in from the excess monies uh, from the general fund. So um, the auditor, of course, has requested that unbudgeted operating transfers be approved by the town council. And uh, our first one is our general government capital projects fund. The fire department had submitted some projects um, for life safety purposes for consideration. And um, they are minor amounts. One is a Lucas device um, for $17,790. The other is an extractor washer for cleaning um, fire turnouts after use. And this amount is $8,882. So we would need an operating transfer out of the general fund for $26,700 to be transferred into the CIP fund. Our CIP fund has all the capital projects that are expended in there. Now, the next one is our highway user fund. We currently are um, under audit with the Auditor General's office for our transportation excise tax funds. And in review of the um, expenditures within this fund, it was noted that we had operating transfers that they felt were excessive. We have, I have gone through at least four transportation excise tax fund um, audits. And this is the first time this one has been called out to our attention. So what we had to do was to go back and reconcile the transfers and then adjust them according to what the auditors felt that uh, needed to be adjusted to. Well, in doing so, we had to go back five years and after five years, it's a considerable amount of money. So um, we are requesting a transfer of $965,930 that will be made into the highway user fund to pay it back. And then that will come out of the general government CIP fund. And that way um, we will satisfy what the auditors have requested and in doing so, uh, our audit, uh, normally these audits call to the attention of the public in a published document if you have um, findings that they receive. But if you correct them prior to this, uh, the audit being completed, then they defer those. And um, that's what we want to do is we wanna go ahead and before the end of this fiscal year to refund the HER fund. Our next one is cemetery expense in the same, Thing we went back, I had uh, done a study and on fee schedule elements and discovered that the highway user fund that uh, has the employees that do the cemetery work uh, whenever we have burials, et cetera, uh, we had not recorded any expense for that. So again, I have to repay the highway user fund because that's not a qualified expense that was done in the cemetery is recorded in the general fund. So we needed to repay that also. So, and given that um, our financial impact would be that transfer to general government CFP in 26,700, transfers to the highway user fund of $1,021,738, transfers out of the general fund and 82,508 and transfers out of the general government CIP is $965,930.
And so that's the gist of the interfund transfers for this period of time. Are there any questions? Seeing no such questions, thank you for your thorough explanation. Thank you. All right, with that, we need a motion. I make a motion we approve the necessary operating transfer as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item B is discussion approval disapproval to accept Doug Stinson's resignation from the Community Services Advisory Board. Ms. Lisa Garcia. This is a fairly straightforward item. Um, we did contact um, Mr. Stenson after he had a few misses from the boards and commissions, um, but specifically the Community Services Advisory Board and asked him if he wanted to keep um, working with the advisory board or if he wanted to resign from the advisory board. It did state that he would like to resign from the advisory board. It's up to council to accept his resignation. The following item is then about placement of boards of people who have uh, applied to boards and commissions. All right, thank you. I, I would like to say thank you for Mr. Stinson for serving on this boards and commission. We always appreciate our citizens who come forward and serve their community. Any other questions or comments from council? Seeing no such movement, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve um, to accept Doug Stinson's re resignation from the Community Services uh, Advisory Board. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. And the motion carries. Item C is discussion, approval, disapproval of an appointment of boards and commissions. Our first is to appoint Carolyn Davis and Kelly Mendoza to the Community Services Advisory Board with terms to expire December 31st, 2024. Appoint Kathleen Lehman as an alternate to the Community Services Advisory Board with a term to expire December 31st, 2021. And second, to appoint Philip West as an alternate to the Historic District Advisory Committee with a term to expire December 31st, 2021. Ms. Garcia, I'm going to turn it over to you, but I'm also going to just ask that clarifying question since we had that resignation first. Ms. Kathleen Lehman would also be appointed with Ms. Mendoza, correct? Um, no, it would be, it would be um, Carolyn Davis and Kelly Mendoza. Oh yes, I apologize. Thank there you. There was only one seat available. Thank um, you. Mayor, Man members of council, I'm pleased to announce that at this time, if the council makes the following appointments, um, our boards and commissions have not only full and active members, but we do have alternates for almost every board. So we have a full house, which has been some time since we've had a full house of board commission members. So we are very pleased with this. Um, the clerk's office will be entertaining them by um, having open meeting law training and board and commission training in the near months. So they can expect lots of fun uh, with our full boards. Um, the, we did have an advisory group that met for, for our uh, code and that was the mayor and it was the council liaison members and that would be Christian Rodriguez and um, John Anderson as well as Hezekiah Allen, the um, staff liaison. They did meet, interview all of the candidates for the community services positions and the recommendations that we're forwarding tonight are the recommendations of that body. And as far as the alternate, we did not have we did not have interviews with them, but we placed them. And that if a position comes available, there is one alternate in front of them to be appointed. Thank you so much, and I do want to recognize we have one of our um, community services advisory applicants that's on the agenda tonight in the audience, Ms. Kelly Mendoza. How are you tonight? Thank you for coming this evening. Are there any questions or comments, Mr. Mendoza? 
Um, I don't know if I need to recuse myself because she's a family member. Um, so I think I will recuse myself for this vote. Okay, absolutely. With all that, if there's no other questions or comments. Oh, oh go ahead, Mr. Council Member Neal. I don't know if the vote messed up or what, but you said 21, it's 22. Um, you know what, you're exactly right, Ms. Garcia, we do have to make a correction on the first item, six, or C1 where it says the appointment of Kathleen Lehman as an alternate to the Community Services Advisory Board with a term to expire December 31st. Is that 2021 or 2022, Mr. Neal asked? Um, it will be 2021 at the end of this fiscal year. Okay. That's okay. All right. Hey, it's always good to ask questions. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to also interject. Go ahead. Um, I would just like to make sure that um, all of the uh, boards and commissions understand um, the historic district one has had the same commissioner for many years. And based on their, based on the requirements, it should not be that way. Are you, we can re-look at the code if you would like to re-look at the appointing procedures and mm -hmm. how long a term of office is for. We can also potentially look at lengths of terms and um, some communities do no more than two terms on one board consistently. And we can definitely look into writing something if council would like us to do that. I would, yeah, I would. From what I recall in reading the codes, we can change who the chairperson is. The uh, most boards and commissions, they um, elect or they nominate their chair. Yes. But if we're talking about terms of office, meaning that someone would not serve more than six years, if you had two consistent three-year terms, it means that no one would be on the board consistently for six years. They would go over to another board. Is that what I'm asked to look at or are you asking? No, I'm asking specifically for the commissioner's position. Um, from what I understand there, uh, it's notated that they are supposed to serve more than so many consecutive times in that position. Let Does that make back, sense? Let me go back and pull that for you. We can definitely write term limits if that's what council. Yeah, requested. and that's what my understanding is. It's there. It's just not been followed. Uh, I will send all of council the um, ordinance as it exists today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, seeing no other movement, we need a motion. I make a motion that we approve the appointees as presented here tonight. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And that motion carries. Thank you again to all applicants and everybody who is committed and willing to serve in the community. It's very much appreciated. And again, this is the first time that we've had our boards and commissions full with active members who want to participate and it's amazing. Item D is discussion, approval, disapproval of entering into a contract with Cactus Transport doing business as Cactus Asphalt for the Arizona Farms Overlay Project phase two in an amount not to exceed $1,259,000 $295.48. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of council. Approximately two years ago, the town completed the very first phase of Arizona Farms Road. Uh, this is the second phase of that project, very similar project. We will be widening the road approximately two feet on each side to probably the original width to provide a two foot wide shoulder as well as provide a uh, additional structure to that section. Again, very similar to the first project. Um, today, Arizona Farm sees approximately about 5,000 vehicles per day and is in poor condition. Um, 
by advancing this project, we will reduce future maintenance costs for this section of roadway. Excellent, I'm glad to see that widening and I can definitely see that we need that in other areas as well. Council, did you have any questions or comments on this agenda item? Seeing no such movement, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve entering into a contract with Cactus Transport doing business as Cactus Asphalt for the Arizona Farms Overlay Project, phase two, in the amount not to exceed $1,259,295.48. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. Item D is discussion, approval, disapproval to contract with Cactus Transport doing business as Cactus Asphalt for the reconstruction of a portion of Hunt Highway in amount not to exceed $1,228,965.28. Mr. Chris Ellis. Thank you. Um, this project started off approximately three years ago with the idea that the road would be widened depending on future building permits to allow for four total lanes, two lanes in each direction. The traffic has not increased as much as originally planned. Um, this project was coordinated with the county. We have a monthly standing meeting with the county. And after speaking to the county engineer, we both agreed that the idea of widening the road at this current level is probably a mistake. And so the CIP was amended this year to push out the future widening for approximately three years, and we would monitor that every year. Uh, council approved approximately 18 months ago a full geotechnical uh, evaluation of Hunt Highway. This section was studied in particular. This area, this section of roadway is not uh, conducive to an overlay as Arizona Farmers Road was. This area has poor performing subgrade which manifests in all of the potholes that you're seeing today. It has kind of come out of the uh, blue. In fact, we have been patching potholes even on weekends as of recently. So this is a much needed repair. There will be a asphalt bypass, if you will, for traffic to be maintained during this time. Speeds will be reduced approximately appropriately to 25 miles an hour during this time. Working with the contractor, we evaluated a milling bypass, an asphalt bypass, um, flaggers, working with the county, none of those were appropriate methods. The idea of stopping a lane that probably, again, carries 5,500 cars in each direction was just not found to be a viable solution. So there is an additional cost, but this is a normal methodology to allow for construction traffic to occur. Whether we're building a bridge or um, widening during the boom, this was a normal practice. Um, this is going to occur within the town easement. It will be a one lane bypass. So we'll have to switch north to south. They will be doing one lane of construction during that time. Again, there was a lot of effort put into planning the construction of this. This will be a full depth construction. So you will see the roadway go down more than a foot as the roadway is excavated and put back together. This was one of the projects that we discussed at the last council meeting for the need or the necessity to increase the JOC price. I don't think there are any additional pertinent facts at this time. All right, thank you very much. Council, are there any questions? Council Member Rodriguez. Since this is such a used road, I was just wondering if for a public um, process, if you had maps to show the public what segments you're speaking about or how big these segments are. We, we do. Um, are you asking for those tonight? I was hoping that you could put them up on the screen so that the public could see what segments of uh, uh, highway yeah, would be impacted. Right. We do have it in our packet. Right. And we have already emailed this all over to the town's PIO officer slash all the other titles he has been bidder. 
we coordinated with this with the uh, HOA from Anthem and Pinal County. So we have we have that coordination and those signs, those variable messages signs will be placed out as of tomorrow if this project is approved. So there will be plenty of time to let the public know. And Sean is pulling that up as we speak right now. Thank you. But this this will require uh, a lot of effort based on signage, again, working with the HOAs, our own internal, and I'm sure Ben will have this on all the social media outlets that I'm unaware of. So it's going to be Hunt Highway starting where, from where to where? Just north of the curve to basically the railroad track. Okay, thank you, because we can't pull the map up right away, but nowhere was that ever mentioned. So it's beneficial for the public that's at home and the public that's sitting here to at least have those reference points. Well, the map that I'm looking at shows it's uh, north of uh, the town limits. It is just the big little yellow pin is at the town limits. That will be the actual terminus of the project. So it is uh, three or 400 feet south of the railroad tracks, I believe. That's not the map I'm looking at. This, this is on page 191. Mm -hmm. Sean is pulling up, yeah, the pair. Yeah, yeah. So it is just north of the curve, all the way so north of Franklin Road, north of the curve. That is the, the beginning of the project on the southern limits is the end of the project that we did about two and a half years ago when we did an overlay at the time for that part of the project. And then it goes north all the way to where the sign says town limits. That is, that will be the survey limit of the project. So this will start, sorry, this will start at where the, where it goes down from uh, two lanes on the one side down, where it goes down that, that It's portion. a little further to the north, but yes. Oh, it's a little bit further. So there's gonna be a gap between the two, between the nice pavement. And then when you hit the, the black top, you're gonna have a gap between that and then this new. No, the, the town did a project, like I said, 30 months ago around the curve, that should still be nice pavement today. Okay. And we'll be tying right into where that pavement was and then doing a full depth reconstruction for the, the, the north. There should not be anything that is left remaining that should be old in this area. And then the county is, I, I didn't mention this, the county is partnering with the town to complete approximately $200,000 worth of work from the town limit to where their microsurface project was done a few years ago. Uh, it's not necessarily a requirement, they're going to have, or we are going to have a contractor out there. They won't have to pay mobilization fees, and it kind of completes the look of the entire area. Unfortunately, they don't now have room to do a bypass, so they're still trying to figure out what their construction method is going to be. Okay. Chris, I'm still a little confused. Is that a railroad track or a canal that, that it crosses there? Um, we don't cross the railroad tracks. We are south of the railroad tracks. Well, that's what I'm confused about this map. I think this is a bad map. I don't think this is where you're explaining. I don't see the curve. Mayor, council member, perhaps I can assist. Uh, what you're looking at is Magic Ranch. That's where the golf course is. The, the heavy dark black line that is uh, diagonal there is the Union Pacific Industrial Lead. So our project limits and our town limits end before you get to Magic Ranch or before you get to that railroad crossing. That's where that top yellow pin and is, yeah. Council Member Anderson. That, that's where it ends? That's, that's what, all right, so it depends on what area you're starting from. So if you're starting from there, as you're entering into the area where it's Magic Ranch right over the railroad tracks, but on our side where you see the town of, entering the town of Florence sign, 
that's where it'll pick up. And then it'll carry all the way down until we get to that like right curve. Where do you, you see those two, the two mountains. those two um, cylinder mountains right there? That's where that curve wraps around and down here would be the community of Anthem and Florence. This is outside the town limits. Yes. No, it's inside of the town limits. We have the road that goes all the way out there. So remember, even though we don't technically own, you know, land or property, we still own the roadways and it's our... Well, I understand that. I'm just saying this, this is beyond the town limits. Chris, uh, can you show, can you use the pointer? and show where the elementary school is. You can see kind of the edge of that lot at the bottom of the map. Go down. I'm sorry, what are you, what was it you're trying to show? show where the charter school is and where the hospital is, well, right down there. Yeah, yeah, it's further to the south. Correct. Right in this area. So the curve just north of Anthem that goes between the buttes, mm -hmm. okay, which right. we did about 20 months ago. So the project will start just at the end of that curve project that was completed and it will extend up to the, uh, to the end of the town boundaries just south of Magic Ranch, which is all in the town boundaries. Okay, I understand now. Which will be nice for our residents that travel and commute for work, because as it is now, we go from four lanes to two lanes, and it stays that way for quite a while. My wife There's complains about it every time we drive up that road. There's still gonna be those two lanes. It's gonna be a difficult commute. Total. It's, it's still gonna be only two lanes total is what you're saying. It's not going to expand to four. You, you said that mm -hmm. it's only gonna expand. It's only gonna essentially redo what's there and they're only gonna have the bypass around temporarily for construction. So it's not going to expand the roadway. It's simply going to redo the roadway. I read we were going to have four total lanes, two in each direction. Did I misunderstand? Previously, this project was planned to widen the road to four lanes they years ago. Not to do that. It is no longer going to be to widen the road today. There were a multitude of reasons, including just again appropriate spending at this time to not necessarily widen the road when it is not needed. The issue is the structure, not the capacity. So the town worked with the county to determine where it would be appropriate, and we both had decided that at this time we should not be widening the road. Um, the design would still need to be completed because it's no longer a maintenance project. It would need to be a design. So we pushed that out in our CIP a few additional years. That is, that is, you are absolutely correct that we are not widening the road today. We are having just a bypass to allow during construction traffic to not have essentially a pilot car or a road closure during that time. Okay. I think that's a mistake, but. That's my personal opinion. I'm not on the county, so I didn't get to make that decision, but I think that it's better to be ahead of the growth than with it or behind it. And I think if we wait two to three years, just with the way the real estate market is going and builders can't even keep up with building houses and they're trying to buy up land as fast as they possibly can and they're paying top dollar for it, that road's already congested. I drive it every single day and um, there's safety hazards on that road. And I see that just by going in and slapping some pretty shine on it is not addressing the real issue that it's a two lane road that really should be a four lane road. I understand money and spending, but we spend this money now. And then next year you guys come back and say, oh, we need to widen it to four lanes and we're gonna spend even more money because now we got to pull up what we just made fancy or in two years still do the same thing. I think it's gonna cost us more money in the end to wait than it would to do it now. That's my personal opinion. I completely agree with everything that Michelle just said. I think that I know that obviously we can't make Pinal County agree to this, but in my opinion, we needed to expand that to a four lane uh, on each side. Um, so to four lane total, sorry. So we are ahead of the growth right now. I, again, I travel it every day and I can tell you there's many, not only the pothole hazard, obviously, which we're being addressed, but there's constant traffic and getting stuck behind somebody. And there's police cars that fly by all the time. There's, it's an, there's an accident waiting to happen. Um, do you know, I guess, question wise, um, where 
obviously not within our time limits, but where they are going to start expanding it to four, are they going to be expanding anything further south than what they are right now? The, the big issue after coordinating with the county and one of the driving factors is the railroad crossing. There is no, there is no plan to widen that crossing in the near future. Can I interject something? Pinal County currently has a transportation plan that is out for review and they want citizen and community feedback. So considering that this project needs to happen with coordination in conjunction with Pinal County, I would urge all of our council members as well as our citizens to fill out that survey as well as communicate with Pinal County. And call your supervisors. So this way they can, you know, they, unfortunately this has to be done with a partnership with them. And by communicating, especially our citizens that are traveling that road every day. And I've taken that road where there have been almost accidents or traffic is significantly slower, especially at certain points of the year. Mm -hmm. So Brent, maybe we can share that Pinal County transportation survey with all the council in case they don't have that link as well as put it up on our social media and webpage to give citizens access. And Supervisor Goodman's information since that would be his area? Yes, it would be. He can send me hate mail later. Well, are we suggesting that we put this on hold until we get this other resolved? I would not suggest that. And the only reason I would not suggest that is this project is going to be occurring in which fiscal year, Mr. Salas? This current fiscal year. This current fiscal year. Remember our expenditure limitations and how things need to be approved and progress. If you push it off into another fiscal year, it may jeopardize the entire project. But wouldn't this be a good project to bond? I'm going to defer that to either Mr. Salas or our town manager. If we decide to, Mayor, Council Member, if we decide to go after another excise tax bond, this is the type of project that you would consider for that bond, uh, true. Uh, but the, the roadway is in, in very poor condition. Um, we're out pothole patching it all the time. Um, I, I think it's absolutely imperative that we try and get this project done as soon as we can for safety reasons. Uh, and hopefully uh, when we widen to four lanes, this new asphalt that's had a full depth reconstruction, we're gonna keep that same uh, asphalt. That's not gonna be torn out as part of a future project. We'll be adding on to that and, and then doing additional drainage improvements. Is that correct, Chris? That is correct. There is no, um, again, this was, this was not something that was evaluated in a vacuum. We did have the idea of keeping all the current asphalt. Um, currently, again, industry standards do not uh, suggest that we should be widening it today. Um, we do have time before those industry standards. At the same time, I do believe we will be moving forward on a completed design this next fiscal year. So if the project area does explode with growth, we'll have a set of plans that we can just blow the dust off of and we can move towards an IFB, an invitation for bid, because we have construction documents. We'll be able to... Uh, mobilize, if you will, rather quickly. Council Member Mendoza. Are both projects gonna be going on at the same time? No, sir. Okay. The, um, the phasing of the two projects will be as the full depth reconstruction is completed for Hunt Highway, the paving machines will be brought on site that will be paved out. They will immediately be mobilized to Arizona Farms where the overlay will exist or will be constructed on that part of the project. We okay. also have... I was just curious because I want to make sure we have another avenue that people can come if there's too much construction traffic, they can go around either Arizona Farms to Felix and come around. Just, just um, is there a, a start date for either project? We, we have a semi-constructed construction schedule right now that hopefully will be completed 
Um, with the approval tonight, they will move forward with sending the town insurance, bonds, and finalizing that. As of today, it's the first week of May we will get started so that we will finish. It is imperative we finish by the fiscal year on this project. That's part of the emphasis for it. Um, I know when we were talking about signage, one of the points that was brought up is how great it would be when we have great big construction um, plans like this, if people could see the progress along that, that plan. So um, similar to what we see maybe in Queen Creek or in the metro area, you see the little, the little meter go across. Um, something like this, the timeline that might take, I think it'd be great if we had that communication with, um, with our citizens to where they can see the progress, whether you're doing it on the display board or whether you're doing it in 95% complete, 20, you know, just updating citizens as to when they can expect it to be completed as well. On the actual variable message board, you'd like that displayed on that board or is it on the website or? I'd like it when you're driving on it. Um, okay. So that way then when you're driving, oh, we're 25% complete, we're 50% complete. So you know what when you can expect your road to be back to um, normal standard driving. Okay. I believe we can accommodate that. Council Member Anderson. One last question. Uh, I didn't quite understand these two lanes, when we make it four lane, will this be the one side of it or will we tear this all up and do it all over again? For we, we are not going to tear up this roadway in the future. This profile will be continued when we widen the road, but this project is just to reconstruct the two existing lanes using the Perf dollars we have in the future, the widening project will be used primarily through development impact fee funds. So when we make it four lanes, these two lanes will be the right side or the left side or the center or something? Um, the, way that, the way that the right of way was described or the easement was described in 1922, the center line of Hunt Highway is the center line of our easement. So we will widen symmetrically okay. about the center line. So you'll have an additional lane to the, if you will, east and the an additional lane to the west. Good, thank you. Council Member Neal. You said that it will be reviewed in about three years. What's the guarantee of the road being a four lane in that three years? If you gotta look at it and say there's not enough traffic and you don't widen it then, and then the next time you're gonna have to tear up the whole entire thing to do the four lanes. Is it going to be four lanes in three years or is it just gonna be reviewed to be four lanes? It will be reviewed every year, actually. I apologize. I didn't mean to say that we will review it in three years. The idea is it's projected to be needed in three to four years. So the belief is we have time, but we will review this as the same as we would review an important traffic signal intersection. We will review it every year, and then we will decide that if and when the design is done in the next 12 months, if building permits blow up, we would be able to react accordingly. We can go from approved plans to construction in less than 90 days. Okay, because my point about it is I'm pretty sure everybody else is, is the cost. Mm -hmm. And over the years, the road was just gonna get torn up more. And instead of just doing the whole thing at one time, it still seems like, okay, we review it in a year, we review it in another year, and then all of a sudden, hey, let's do it. And the road's so torn up, it's gonna be, we have to tear the whole thing up and do four lanes. This roadway should be good for at a minimum of 20 years. That's the design life of the roadway. So hopefully we maintain it. It wouldn't be unexpected to get 25 to 30 years out of this roadway. So we shouldn't be um, having to do additional um, construction on this particular segment. Seeing no other questions or comments, need a motion. I make a motion that we approve to contract with Cactus Transport DBA Cactus Asphalt for the reconstruction of a portion of Hunt Highway in an amount not to exceed $1,228,965.28. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And that motion carries.
Item number F is discussion approval disapproval to purchase a Skeeter Type 3 firefighting vehicle from Hughes Fire Equipment in an amount not to exceed $281,609.65. Chief Paul Adams. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, uh, this item is to request an expenditure to Hughes Fire Equipment for the purchase of a Type 3 firefighting vehicle. The primary purpose of the vehicle will be to handle lower level calls uh, out of station two, which has the goal of relieving some of the strain and stress on the ladder and to extend its useful life. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. I have a question. Mr. Billingsley, can you tell me, is this the same vehicle that's been requested numerous times in budget sessions and has been denied? Uh, council member, no, it's not. The vehicle that has been in the budget every year for grants funding is a uh, tanker truck, uh, a water hauling truck, if you will. This is actually a type three fire engine uh, attack vehicle. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing no such movement, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve the purchase of a Skeeter th Type 3 firefighting vehicle from Hughes Fire Department in amount not to exceed $281,609.65. Second. Motion in the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item G is discussion approval disapproval to renew the Gary L. Johnson service agreement effective July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2023 with the option to extend another two years exercised by the town. Ms. Catherine Wilson. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this agenda item is basically a renewal of the um, service agreement with our um, benefit agent um, our representative is Eric Johnson uh, with Gary L. Johnson and Associates. Um, it's to renew the service agreement for the next two years in the amount of $30,000 per year, per fiscal year. And um, they provide multiple services to the town um, by helping us to negotiate our benefits um, for each fiscal year. So without any other explanation if there's any questions? Are there any questions or comments? Seeing no such movement, we need a motion. I'll make a motion we approve agenda item 8G. Second. Motion, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 10 is our legislative update. Mr. Ben Bitter, would you like to pop on board? Hey, Mayor, thanks for on there. That works better. Thanks, Mayor and the council for a couple minutes here. Uh, really not a lot to report on, so I won't take too much time just to mention that uh, the legislature is hitting its 100th day of its session tomorrow, which is technically supposed to be the final day of session, but we are still waiting on a budget. So we haven't seen a budget proposal from the House or from the Senate yet. Uh, there are, again, still the same rumblings about the uh, proposed income tax cut, uh, which would be a $1.5 uh, billion cut. 15% uh, of all of those revenues come to cities and towns, so it would be a cut to city and town budgets by $225 million per year. So obviously we are fighting against that in terms of the uh, the impact to cities and towns have no position on, on whether or not the state should do a tax cut. That's obviously their purview. Uh, we just don't want it to impact cities and towns. And so we continue to monitor things at, uh, at the Capitol and hope that things can turn out a little bit better for us and, and we'll do all we can there. So with that, happy to answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions for Mr. Bitter? All right, thank you for the update. Thank you for the continued emailed communication about the update, um, as well as what we hear from the league. Item number 11 is our manager's report. 
Madam Mayor, members of council, two things. Well, actually it's just one thing with two parts to report tonight. The fitness center is now open as of today. It opened uh, for a test period on Friday and now it's, it's open to the public. And I believe uh, Hezekiah reported earlier today had over 30 people sign up uh, today. And secondarily, the senior center opened uh, back up to congregate meals today. And I believe he said eight people came today. That's all I have. Very nice. Next, we have our second call to the public. Is there anybody from the public that would like to comment, speak at this time? If you're attached to the meeting and would like to speak, please raise your hand at this time. I am not seeing anybody raise their hand. All right, excellent. Going ahead and closing our second call to the public. Call to the council for current events only. Council member Mendoza. I don't have anything to report. <laughs> All right, council member Neal. I have nothing. Council member Rodriguez. I just wanted to say um, how great it is to see our community back in action. Uh, I've seen the third Fridays pick up um, on their traffic and really seeing that thrive. So I just wanna congratulate other people who are part of all of the work that goes into that event. Um, I've seen people going out to the windmill more often and engaging over at um, the river bottom. So it is great to see our community back out and engaging in community face-to-face. -face. Um, I hope everybody does stay healthy during this time. I know um, people are getting their vaccines and people are still social distancing and keeping their masks on. And it's just so great to be able to be in person. So I just wanted to say, and I'm very happy for our community for us to be able to meet again. Council member Anderson. I uh, attended the uh, chamber meeting this past week and uh, the chamber members are very excited about the town reopening and uh, they're trying to figure out a way that they can reopen. So uh, uh, hopefully uh, they can accomplish that. They're talking about having meetings in the uh, uh, park. And even I, I think there's a, an event planned to be on the porch this next week. So uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I'm pleased to see these people so excited that they are still, some have concern about, you know, uh, wearing masks and being in social distancing and stuff like that. So I think we'll still see that going on. And I'm pleased with that. Uh, that's primarily all I have right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Vice Mayor Cortez. Um, yeah, sorry, I drew a blank for a second. Uh, yeah, I, I get the um, chamber emails because I'm actually a chamber member. And so it's nice to get those from Roger and he talks about the growth um, that they've experienced with the third Fridays and other events. And I think our chamber is doing an awesome job. And so are our small businesses that are helping participating and thinking outside the box and creating events and creating the buzz, things like what Ty did um, although it's a competition, it creates a healthy competition. And I like that because no matter who wins, I think all of all of Pinal County, but especially Florence wins, because I think we won last year too. I'm pretty sure that one of our businesses Three won out last of four year. Top. Yeah, we're always four. in the top. And so I think it's great because it starts that conversation about, oh, I didn't know that Florence had that. I didn't know that Florence had a windmill winery that hosts weddings. I didn't know they had a fudge shop that is world known people come from all over to um, come to our fudge shop and I didn't know they had a leather goods store there and so I think it's great and then with our new businesses that are coming um, the grants that we offered our businesses has made a huge impact on their ability to stay open and um, participate in these events because it's given them that little second to take a deep breath um, 
seeing businesses all over the country when I went back to Denver that were staples of the of the community and are gone because they couldn't survive and nobody was offering them help. So I commend our town for doing what was right for our businesses. Um, I also wanted to talk about, I attended the logo design that the chamber and the local businesses and the economic development are doing. And it's, it's been interesting and they're coming up with some great ideas. And um, one of the discussions in it, though, was making sure that people understand that once an official logo is created, it's not something that should be uh, altered. And so that's one of the big things that uh, the discussion was about, was that it, once you create it and you shouldn't alter it to fit your needs for your business or for whatever you're advertising, that once it's a logo, it's a logo and it should stay that way. And so um, I definitely supported that opinion and probably was the one that brought it up. Um, I also wanted to talk about, um, there still is an issue with speed in the Anthem community on the two main streets, um, the Merrill Ranch and uh, American Way. And I know that I had expressed in the past to um, our chief that I had almost got ran over crossing at like five in the morning because that's when I was walking and the speed and it's not even so much that can it's like traffic that I can't figure out why they're in our in the community I can't figure out if they're construction workers in their own vehicles or if it's truly the community members that think it's appropriate to drive 60 miles an hour down um, that road. But I did get a complaint from a citizen whose daughter was hit. And um, from what I understand, they left the scene. They didn't stay to um, ensure that she was okay. And they are requesting a light to be put in by the community center. Um, I don't know the probability of that because it's in the it's in a community, but I do know that we could maybe try to step up our patrol and address those speeds and start writing tickets because it, it is it is very much a, a, an issue in the community, the speed that people are going because there's there's, you know, when you first come in, you have your light and then you have a stop sign at the community center and you don't have another one until you get to uh, the entrance into Sun City. And so that's a pretty good stretch of road, the same stretch of road that runs along the park. So there's not another stop sign. And I live by the soccer field side of the park. And I always laugh because people stop there thinking there's a stop sign. And I'm like sitting there going, why are you stopping? There's no stop sign. And then they run the stop sign at Sun City. And so I don't know if we need to put like the flashing lights on there or what we can do to bring more attention. But it is a it is a safety issue when we have children that are being hit by cars. And then, um, you know, our walkers, we have a lot of walkers in the area and a lot of people on bicycles. And so I worry every day that somebody's going to get hit. And um, so if we could just maybe find a way to help address that so that our citizens feel safe with their kids out on the street. And that's it and have a great week. All right, so a lot of what I had has kind of already been said. So I've been like chopping off my list, which is good because I don't believe in reiterating things. Um, I do want to say once again, we have made number one for the Florence safe community and SafeWise gave us that recognition. Something that I just wanted to comment on and I'm, I'm glad Mark Kelling is here with us this evening because it was in the paper as I was reading. Something that's interesting is yes, we definitely have a large population that is incarcerated. However, our community provides services to those that live within our boundaries, whether they live outside of the gated community or within that gated community. That means whenever there's a violent attack, an assault, a rape, something happens, our police respond, our medical teams respond through the fire department. So that's why they count within our numbers. So to have 
all of those different diverse types of populations living in Florence, Arizona, people, some of the most violent offenders are housed there and they still count towards our numbers. Yet we are the number one safest community. We have a community that looks out for one another. We have a community that supports one another and we pull together. So I just felt that that was really important to highlight because as I read through the news article, I thought I really wanted to reach out and talk. So I'm glad that you're here this evening. Um, second was just again, please go ahead and communicate out with your county supervisors regarding that transportation study. It's always important that we communicate at any level, just as in Ms. Ramirez did this evening. By being made aware of certain things, it gives an opportunity to move forward and either make a process better or fix a problem that somebody may not have known occurred. Town of Florence, again, we have some amazing things that are happening. I did attend Third Fridays this past week and something that I noticed and it was brought to my attention from um, one of our local bands. They said, hey, does the town of Florence have a stage? Because, you know, we had a band that was playing up on top of the Silver King and something that was unique was the fact that you really didn't have that interaction that you get with most bands. And I said, you know, I don't actually know off the top of my head, but I'm going to find out because I think that could be something that we could bring to the table and contribute to that third Fridays by having a stage that the town owns that could be utilized for a variety of purposes within the community, such as third Fridays or events over at Heritage Park. The Women's Club is having a rummage sale on the 24th. I am a member of the Women's Club and I said that I would make that announcement. I hope everybody can go out and support. They're an amazing organization in our community. And last but not least, we are working still to become an autism certified town. And if anybody's interested in serving on a board or helping in any way, please reach out to Mr. Roger Beebe with the chamber. Other than that, that is all I have this evening. I wanna thank everybody for joining us both virtually and in person. It's great to see everybody's smiling faces. We are going to adjourn to executive session at this time. And with that, we need a motion. Make a motion to adjourn to executive session. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same side. And that motion carries.